they face. Yeah. What about you? You'd mentioned earlier, Doctor, about people who get to hire and, and some some people who now sort of in in a waiting and holding pattern. Let's, let's talk about the, the the human services, you know, staffing um, and and whether or not that is now adequate or seem to be adequate, or you'll have a facility. And the, the general lament in some cases that you, you don't have specialists, you don't have um, the doctors and, and, and the staff well, that is required to run this facility efficiently. I think uh, healthcare staff throughout the system, you're going to find areas where, you know, it is a challenge finding um, staff. We, we have to compete with each, with each other within the general health sector for staff. But currently we are on an aggressive um, recruitment drive and um, that is, is currently proceeding and again you have to, to sort of juggle when you take people. But we have been recruiting staff, we have been asking everywhere for staff, you know, who, are, who have relatives abroad, abroad to, you know, say, look, we have a new facility, are you ready to come back home? And we have been having some good responses. Also, we've had the Tobago House of Assembly program where they have sent um, young students on scholarships and some of them are now beginning to return as trained um, doctors within the system and they are they're beginning to return you know there are a couple of the, the students who were discovered to have been in in the former soviet state of georgia a couple of them are from, from tobago right you, you know of them um i've heard i've heard of them but i'm not yeah. so, not sure who they are they, they are not part of the pro prospective team you're trying to hire there because they're doing some kinds of, of medical science studies there? Well, depending on what areas they're, they're doing and um, what we've had to do sometimes is look to see, you know, who's coming back. Are those needs needed right now or would we need them a little later? Can we make the space to have them, you know, implemented now? And so yeah. we have been looking at all of those issues. What's your specialty? I'm a family practitioner by training. Okay, and, and how, how, how much of a need there is for that kind of practice in, in, in Tobago, for that, those kinds of services? Um, family physicians? Yeah. There is a great need because we are, we are also um, expanding within our um, community sector. We know that um, to have a uh, efficient and effective, successful hospital, we have to strengthen the, the community or the primary care. And therefore, yes, you know, doctors are needed within the um, primary care system to, to assist with the health centers. We are now having um, a few of the health centers to, to be having <coughs> extended hours, walk-in clinics, an urgent care setting, such that it takes also the pressure off of the accident and emergency department at the the hospital. Yeah. So yes, so there's a need for them. Tobago is getting its fair share then of these new, these modern state-of-the-art community health facilities then? Yes, mm -hmm. we currently have a couple coming on stream. We have the Scarborough Health Center um, and the Charlottesville Health Center that are coming on board. Yeah. So this new facility we have Keenan, so yeah. it, it will be about five in all, Charleville, Scarborough, Keenan, Moira is, is due to come on board, and Roxbow. That would be many, uh, probably we could call it in our later, mini hospital, that would run from eight to eight to be able to supply it. We have 17 health centers in all in Tobago, which really expands mm -hmm. the primary care level. What we are hoping that would do um, is to reduce the numbers of persons who go to the hospital, accident and emergency, who really don't require going there, that cause the system to be clogged and the waiting time is still to be so long. So, so that's one of the reasons for beefing up the, the primary care. Yeah, and in this brochure I'm looking at there, the, 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 you highlight the, the the receipt and the delivery of, of four new ambulances. Uh, so how many in all are there available? Well, well there are five because we had to take out of commission yeah. um, some that would have been second-hand ambulances. So these are really purpose-built ambulances. What we bought before were, um, were vehicles that we refurbished to become ambulances. And they didn't service as well. But these here are really purpose-built uh, ambulances. Built for the job. job. Yes. And, and these would be sort of assigned to, to the new facility? This would belong to the new facility? Or how, how, how no, they it? belong to the health sector. They yeah. service the whole health sector. And the, the, the community, the and they'll be posted at different points. Yes. Yeah. The hospital will offer services. Um, we're trying to attract um, 
patients from abroad as, as is the case with, with Mount Hope to some extent? We health in tourism of, that's what you would say okay in terms of health tourism well you know we we intend to make sure that we can at least get the basics done um i am sure that you know given the modern type of facility that we have that in the future once we get settled that we can begin looking at some of the services that that can be offered in in that way again it depends on the um the type of doctors take for instance we we had a situation where we were recruiting a um, I think it was a urologist, and his wife is a plastic surgeon. Now we had to, to decide, okay, how can we accommodate both of them to make sure we at least get one and perhaps have the other one provide services from the island. Um, again, it, it's competition, and I, I don't think we, we've, we've been able to get them. You, you're not secured the services yet because... Their services, correct, correct, because, you know, other people have to look at their options and some people say well you know it looks like Tobago can't support my practice you know as a plastic surgeon but those are those are things that we are willing to work around and t to assist people in negotiating Do you agree with that? I mean there, there, there's not so much a great need for plastic surgery because I, it, it's an it was an education for me to understand that, that plastic surgery is not <laughs> simply all about cosmetic surgery right there's, there's some plastic surgery that is correct. necessary right? Correct but when you, if you're talking about just for Tobago, I mean, you're talking about an island of 55,000 persons. I mean, to have a plastic surgeon just for Tobagonians, that is not, you know, that is going to be a challenge. I don't think that person would be busy enough. Yeah. And it would be sort of assisting them or, or sustaining them while they grow their practice from around the region. Yeah. So those are the kind of issues that we are in discussions with. But if you don't get that, that, that urologist, then you have to prospect for another correct that's correct a, so that, that's a challenge correct because yes. you, you, you have a need for yes we have need for urolo urologist for, for more than one for one urologist yeah. yes one of the things that i think would attract people to come to the new hospital and i don't know whether that is going to be the drive to bring people in but certainly laparoscopy is going to be one of the areas which is what we call keyhole surgery where instead of doing the invasive type where you may cut open somebody to be able to do an operation and, and stitch the them neighbor. back up yes you just do a small incision put a camera in do the operation pull back out and then you 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 would really be home within a day two days so that the speed of turnaround that someone comes into the hospital and go back home is going to be an attraction to, to persons uh, and so that is a, a, a service that is going to be available yes yes, yes. and, yes. and you, you have the decisions there ready and well, the surgeons are also continuing with, with training, yes, because yes. we are also upgrading staff as we go along. Yeah, you haven't to been, to you been losing prospective um, targeted professionals because of this, this extended weight with the completion of the facility? I think persons have been, you know, reasonably, you know, understanding through in this, during the situation. Um, it becomes a challenge, but, but remember, we, our commitment is to also bring on as many services at the current site. You know, so if we have a skilled person, we, we are committed to bringing them on at the current site while we wait, because, you know, we still could have, you know, um, services happen there. Um, the challenge is your your um, lesser skilled persons that you you need but who may not be needed at the current site because the facility is about one third the size of the of the the new facility so in terms of housing all the staff that is that is going to be a challenge uh, you know just just um just a, a sort of informational question this facility is is whose is it the the government of trinidad Tobago's facility or the tobago uh, House of Assembly's facility, like who, who pays the bills in the final analysis? Okay, to build, to construct the facility that was under the remit of the, um, the Ministry of Health. Ministry of Health, and therefore the government of Trinidad and Tobago. But at the end of, at the completion, it would be handed over to the Tobago House of Assembly, who then ha they, they would have to run so the professor, facility. So people working here will be working for Tobago the Tobago Regional Health Authority? Correct, correct. Yeah, and uh, the Minister of uh, Tobago Development had said, what is the figure she, she, she identified, $90 million to complete it? Was it $90 million? 
Uh, I can't recall sure the, the, the the figure for completion the, that she would have quoted. Yeah, but but the, the completion is is in progress as we speak. Yes. Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. We're going a going a piece. All right. So between you, you referred to it a while ago that the com the, city, the the commissioning date would, would would be one day, and then how soon after that you you think the you, you all estimate the full. Full occupation yeah, of yeah. the new facility. We assume around six months should give us enough time to make the transition. So whatever date of handover, six months thereafter, yeah. that we'll be able to move. So we're talking December 2011. Right. So but in that six months, some, some services, some services will, will be yes. introduced, correct. But as to the complete transfer of services, we are saying that you know we expect to be complete by six months. All right, we have to leave it there. Thank you very much. Well, looking forward to the services provided at the new Scarborough General.